Sabres Development Camp wraps up this weekend, which means it's the perfect time for my top 10 Sabres prospects list. That is coming up along with some housekeeping items. Sabres signing a couple guys to some contracts. That's all ahead here on Lockdown Sabres. Your Locked On Sabres, your daily podcast on the Buffalo Sabres. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Lockdown Sabres your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We hit 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. We did it. We reached our goal. Thanks, everybody, for watching the show along on YouTube where you can watch us if you did not know. So hit, keep hitting that like and subscribe button as we'll continue to grow uh, our video platform along with the show. Uh, follow us on Twitter. I'm at Sneaky Joe Sports. Jordan Hanskin at JR Hanskin. And the podcast account is at Locked on Sabres. It's going to be a prospect a heavy show today with, you know, free agency being mostly wrapped up. Sabres are probably done, assuming they're not in on Subban or Phil Kessel or Nazem Kadri. I, I think they're probably done other than maybe a minor signing here or there. They're for the most part done. RFA is still to take care of. we got some news on that front that we'll get to in just a second here. And development camp is now over. So this is a perfect time to talk some prospects. I've got my top 10 Sabre prospect list coming your way on today's show, counting down from 10 to 1. And uh, development camp was a good time. The three-on-three tournament was a lot of action back and forth, showing off some of the talent and the skill level that's on display in the Sabres pipeline. You really got to see why they are ranked as, if not number one in the NHL, very close to it. Second, third, fourth. They're almost always ranked in the top five in terms of prospect pools in the league. So I've got my top 10 list coming up. So stay tuned for that. Some housekeeping to take care of. The Sabres did make a couple of signings in the last couple of days. They did sign uh, Brett Murray, a restricted free agent winger to a one year deal uh, for the, if at the NHL level, the minimum, right? Like around $800,000. So he'll probably figure to be playing in, the AHL this season and be a bubble guy. It sounds like he, it seems like he's kind of developed into that though. I'm not sure that Brett Murray at this point in his career, 23 years old, he'll be 24 by the time the start of the season comes around. And when you're 24 years old and have only played 20 games in the NHL, probably not talking about a regular uh, at any point, but a call up, Maybe, maybe the number one call up uh, at some point this season. And especially if they're looking for that size and that physicality with his being six foot five and 230 pounds, throw his body around a lot. And at least at the AHL level, you know, he could play a little bit 32 points in 52 games last year for the Amherst. I'm holding my breath, though, that again, he's going to be anything in terms of a regular NHL player. Uh, now that we're many years into his development. Uh, Sabres fourth round pick, by the way, from 2016, if you're wondering uh, about the background on Murray. But he's back on a one-year contract. That means the Sabres have two restricted free agents left to sign. They still have to sign R2 Rutsalainen, and they have to sign Uka Pekalukinen. Now, Rutsalainen was arbitration eligible, but he did not file for arbitration. So that should make contract negotiations a little easier. And it sounds like if you heard roots line at the end of this past season and for how well he played in the AHL playoffs, that he'll be back on a two way contract. So honestly, he probably outranks Murray as the number one call up, assuming Paterka and Quinn are at the NHL level, which I can't assume at this point, but roots line. And I would imagine starts the year in Rochester and maybe is a call up, but again, I, he, him, I'm more open to Murray. I don't think so. I think Murray is not an NHL player. Rutsalainen, probably not, but he did develop nicely as last season progressed. And he didn't play very well at the NHL level at the beginning of the year, but by the end of the year in the AHL, I mean, he led the Amherst in scoring as their, as their Calder trophy uh, or Calder cup race was progressing uh, in the AHL. So uh, maybe he carries that over into this season, found that scoring touch, and he's going to be an NHL player, a guy that wins a spot out of camp. 
I'm betting against that. I'd be open to it, though. And if not, a guy that starts the season with the Sabres, maybe someone that is one of the first call-ups and is able to play his way into a spot as the season goes on. So he needs a contract, and Lukanen needs a contract. The Lukanen one should be pretty easy. Maybe it's more than one year. I don't really know what they'll do on that front, but they'll, those guys will get done. There's really no drama here uh, when it comes to the remaining Sabres RFAs. Uh, development camp, though, just some quick thoughts before I get to my top 10. Uh, Jake Richard really stood out. I'm going to really focus, especially the guys not in my top 10 uh, for this part real quick. The, the, the couple of days that Jake Richard had were pretty incredible. Uh, he looked really strong. I, I mean, hazard to say he was one of the best players there. And we're not talking about, you know, a very, uh, <laughs> we're not talking about a very highly thought of prospect. Uh, sixth round pick of the Sabres this past year, uh, Muskegon of the USHL. But all right, look great. Six foot one. He's not that big, little scrawny, but. Uh, we'll see. Maybe a couple of years down the road, we'll be he'll be the next Victor Olofsson, where we're like, oh, look at this Jake Richard. They found a diamond at the rough at the end of the draft, and he's going to show up and play for them. So we'll see. But he was really strong. Uh, Eric Portillo was pretty good. He's not in my top 10, just a spoiler alert. But he looked pretty good. He didn't sound very open to me to coming back to the Sabres uh, or signing with the Sabres once his Michigan season is over. Um, other guys had their moments, but those were the two that are not in my top 10 prospects list that I thought stood out the most. Uh, we'll get to my top 10 list when we return here on the Lockdown Sabres podcast, going from 10 to 1. So come back for that. We are brought to you by betonline.net, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. You've got Major League Baseball rocking and rolling midway through the season right now. Got my Nationals shirt on right now. I'm not a Nationals fan, but I did go see a game. So you can bet the Nationals if you want. Juan Soto, uh, I think there are trade odds up at betonline.net. He denies a $440 million contract offer with Washington. And at last check, there was uh, an ability to bet on whether or not he, let's see, let me see, Juan Soto. Yes, Juan Soto, next team if traded at Bet Online. The New York Mets are the favorite at plus 400. The New York Yankees are right behind them at plus 500. Uh, so head over to betonline.net, Major League Soccer, uh, UFC, Boxing, uh, golf, they've got everything you need, all the information or the ability to bet if you're looking to throw some money down. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, where the game starts. Jody Biasi back here on the Locked on Sabres podcast. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most starting today? July 18th, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the National Football League from the odds makers at Bet Online. Available July 18th on Locked On NFL, wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. All right, Sabres prox prospects with development camp now wrapped up. Who are the top 10 in the Sabres pipeline in the organization? Uh, we will kick things off with number 10, Isaac Rosine. That's right, he's Rosine now, not Rosen, Rosine. Rosine is going to go back to Sweden this season. Maybe. Maybe he's at the AHL level. I hope he is. He did sign an entry-level contract with the Sabres, so he is eligible to play for the Amherst. I think that is the smartest thing to do with him. The reason I will not put him lower than 10. I'm not really willing to, to hammer him for the lack of minutes in Sweden plus the injury that he dealt with this year in Sweden as well. His development really hit a bit of a rocky, termulous time. Uh, it feels like he didn't have a real chance. I think if he's in Rochester this season, we'll get a better idea of what he is and what type of development path he really is on. But the skill set is there. They drafted him 14th overall for a reason. There's good speed. There's good playmaking ability. And um, hopefully we can get... The Sabres can get uh, Rosine's development back on track, but we will see. He comes in at number 10. Number 9, Ryan Johnson. Puck-moving defenseman lacks the elite size or the elite athleticism to become an elite player, in my mind, at the NHL level. So for that reason, because his upside is capped, he could be a really good second-pair defenseman. Will he ever be a team's franchise defenseman? The answer is probably not. 
I think maybe everybody else above him I, more open to the idea of becoming a, a, a tremendous player, uh, an all-star level player. And I just, I don't see that out of Johnson, but I think he'll be an NHL player. He projects as one uh, this season, probably at the university of Minnesota. We don't know for sure though, because we haven't gotten an official word on whether or not he is signing with the Sabres or whether or not he's going. My wonder has been, is he putting it out there that I'm either going to Minnesota or I'm playing in the NHL and then I'm not going to Rochester. If it, it feels like that's logical, but we don't know. So, um, We'll have to hold out and see what happens with Ryan Johnson. He comes in at number nine because I think he lacks the upside that a lot of these other guys do. Number eight. The number eight Sabre prospect in the pipeline. Ukapeka Lukanen, goaltender, giant frame, good lateral quickness. He needs to play better at the AHL level, but he is very raw and goalies take time. So because of the physical skill set that he possesses, I am going to put him in at number eight. Could he be a franchise goalie and be the starting goalie for this team for a very long time? Yes. The answer to that question is yes. He could be that. And he needs to take that next step. He played well in the NHL level, surprisingly, despite not playing well at the AHL level. He needs to earn it. He needs to go to Rochester. He probably needs to go to Rochester now that Eric Comrie is in the picture. Play really well there for the first month or two of the season. Beat out Craig Anderson for the second NHL roster spot next to Eric Comrie and maybe by the midpoint of this coming season or the end point of this coming season he has he's an NHL goaltender I think where you want to be one year from today is Ukapeka Lukanen is an NHL goaltender and you don't have to wonder about whether or not he's one of your two goalies for the 2023-24 season a year from now you want to know that Lukanen is one of your goalies for 2023-2024. He comes in at number eight, though, because of the upside. Number seven, Devin Levi. So good at development camp. Goaltender, he is the number one goaltender in the organization right now uh, in terms of value. He was just amazing at development camp. He really was showcasing his amazing quickness, positional discipline, recovery skills on that one shootout goal by Jack Quinn doesn't give up on the play. I'm really optimistic, but the reason I don't have him higher than seven, it is so hard to project goaltenders. It is so incredibly difficult, it, especially when we're talking multiple years out. Lukanen's close. Lukanen, you're starting to get an idea, or you will this year. Levi, we're talking three, four years maybe before we know what he'll be at the NHL level. And projecting that far out, not knowing what his seasons at Northeastern will be like or Rochester, or, there's so many steps to go that you have to be cautious. And that's why I think the Sabres signed Eric Comrie and why they'd want to sign Eric Portillo and why they drafted Tobias Leenan in, in the second round. Because the Sabres know. They know how hard it is to project goaltenders. If they knew Devin Levi would be a franchise goaltender, they would not have drafted Tobias Lindenen 41st overall in the second round of this past draft. They wouldn't have, but they did because they know how hard it is to project goaltenders. And I'm sticking with that frame of logic and saying that it's going well. He's the most valuable goalie in the system, but it's the hardest position to project in hockey for prospects. And because of that, I don't feel comfortable putting him higher then number seven, he'll be at Northeastern this season. And I can bet you Sabre fans are going to be interested in uh, in that at uh, ESPNU, ESPN Plus. There'll be ways to watch him throughout the year and track his development. Number six, Yuri Kulich. First round pick, 28th overall in this past draft class. Great shot release. Uh, some of the things that I noticed from him in development camp. The puck release jumped off the page to me. The finishing ability. A good skater. Good quickness, a creator. I think in terms of a zone entry man, a setup guy, it seems like he's got the skill set to be that at the next level. Does he possess, though, the defensive awareness at the next level to play center? I wonder if he projects more as a winger when he gets to the NHL level. Hopefully, he'll continue to develop as a centerman so that that decision can be made when he gets to the NHL level this season. Coolidge will be playing with the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles of the QMJHL. Actually, I'm not, I don't know that for sure. I know that's where his 
Canadian junior rights are held. He was third overall in the CHL draft. Um, so I don't don't know if that's where he'll be, but I know that's where his rights are. So will he be at Cape Breton or Czech Republic? And assuming he's not a Sabre, which would blow my mind in any, everyone's mind if he were able to win a job. So Yuri Kulich at number six. We'll come back. We'll do the top five. The top five Sabre prospects in the organization when we come back here on the Locked On Sabres podcast. Welcome back to the Locked On Sabres podcast. Joe DiBiase here. And we've got the top five Sabre prospects in the organization coming your way. Starting at number five, Noah Oslin, the 16th overall pick. The pick from the Jack Eichel trade. He is now a part of the Jack Eichel trade forever. Some actually have Coolidge, who was picked behind Oslin at 28 by the Sabres. Some have Coolidge higher ranked than Oslin because they had him higher ranked in the NHL draft. The Sabres did not agree, and I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on this because I'm st- I'm confident in Kevin Adams and his staff, Jeff Ventura, the analytics guys, and it seems like they've known what they're doing the last couple of years. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt and put Oslin just a tad higher than Yuri Kulich. They did pick him 12 spots higher. Dynamic, shifty player. Didn't stand out too much for me at development camp, but he didn't do anything bad either. Projected as a center, projected more as a center. Another reason why I felt comfortable putting Oslin one spot higher than Coolidge because Coolidge might be more of a winger at the NHL. Oslin, it feels like he's going to be a center. This season, he'll be going back to Sweden. Um, he said he thinks he's one year away and then he'll be ready for the NHL. I think more likely for him is probably two years. Maybe he takes the Isaac Rosine route of play a year in Sweden and then maybe come over to Rochester for next year. Uh, and then after that, maybe you're at the NHL level. So I'm guessing two years for Oslin, even though he says uh, it'll, it'll only be one. Number four, JJ Paterka. I think he's ready for the NHL. The speed, the playmaking, the offensive awareness, the zone entry ability that he possesses. I think this season should be the Buffalo Sabres. And what a pick. It already seems to be going really well. A second round guy to be this highly rated in the organization to where we're putting him above how many of these first round picks? Olsen was a first round pick. Coolidge was a first round pick. Um, Johnson was a first round pick. Rosine was a first round pick. We're putting Paterka ahead of all of them. He is ready to crack the NHL lineup or just about ready to crack the NHL lineup. I would have him in my opening night lineup. I think it's probably closer to 50-50 whether or not he'll be in the opening night lineup. And we're talking about star potential with J.J. Paterka. Not superstar potential, I think. I want to stop short of that. But star potential out of this guy. So Paterka comes in at number four. Number three, Matthew Savoy. The Sabres' ninth overall pick from a couple of weeks ago in the NHL draft. Uh, Danny Briere 2.0. It's my favorite comparison for Savoy. The, the shiftiness the skating ability, the just pure dynamic offensive ability that he has. And the ability to shoot the way he can at five foot nine. It's rare. Alex DeBrinket could do it. Danny Briere was able to do it back in the day. There's not many guys that could get the amount of torque and weight on his stick to finish the way Savoy has done at the uh, at the WHL level for the Winnipeg Ice. And that's why he went ninth overall. I I heard a comment from Tony Ferrari of the Hockey News that if Savoy were 6'1", instead of 5'9", he would have gone first overall in this year's NHL draft. Because of his size and his size alone, he fell to number nine. Do not subscribe to a guy can't be an elite player because he's 5'9". How many times do these old these old ass nhl dinosaurs that run these teams have to see small players thrive at the nhl level before they realize that oh yeah small guys can actually be amazing players as well uh savoy is just probably going to be the next the next edition of that uh the next sample of oh yeah you can draft five foot nine guys that high and i'm glad the sabers were that team that did it um he wasn't gonna fall too much further behind them so someone was gonna do that near the top of the draft but I think this guy's going to be amazing. I think he's going to be a star player in the NHL. And right now, I think he's the most likely to be the Sabres' number one center uh, for the future. This season, Winnipeg Ice, I wondered about whether or not he gets the nine-game look at the beginning of the season. Junior players can play nine games before it burns a a year of their entry-level contract. So 
I, I would wonder if the Sabres will give him a look before sending him back to juniors, uh, where he inevitably will likely be this season. Savoy comes in at number three. Jack Quinn comes in at number two. I mean, arguably the best player in the AHL last season. The Sabres' eighth overall pick from a couple of drafts ago, uh, two years in Rochester, and he was the best player in the AHL last season by all by many, many accounts. Uh, historically good AHL season if you factor in his age. The shot release is filthy. It's what will make him special at the NHL level. The skating and the stick handling, though, much better than I thought when he was drafted. Much better. I thought when they drafted him, this is a hired hired gun, that he's a sniper on the wing, and that's it. That he'll score 35 goals and put up 20 assists, and that'll be what he is at the NHL level. After two years, man, he looks like a well-rounded offensive player, and maybe he's an 80, 90, 100-point guy. I don't know what the ceiling is. He had a historically good AHL season for his age, so sky's the limit for him right now. I think... He is the most valuable forward in the Sabres organization, and I think he has to be for, with the Sabres this year. I think he will be, and I think he has to be playing for the Sabres this season. That is the next step in his growth and development. Jack Quinn at number two, which means at number one, undoubtedly, Owen Power. He kind of has to be, doesn't he? The first overall pick from last year played really well in the eight-game sample size he had for the Sabres. Crushed it at Michigan, crushed it for Canada at the Olympics, the World Championships, and World Juniors in the limited limited time that he had there to play. At every place he's going, he's just he's thriving. And he went first overall. So we know the talent is there. 6'6, great skater, great passer, great awareness in all three zones. Um, there's there's no faults. There's no faults. I mean, he's not Kel McCarr as a skater. Is that a fault? I mean, that's like the, the he's not going to be that dynamic of an offensive contributor, I think. But could he be Victor Hedman that's putting up 70-plus point seasons? Maybe. So uh, this is such a well-rounded prospect. He's got to be number one for the Sabres, and he's part of what makes us hopeful they'll get good. They have to be great at something. When they're a playoff team, they got to be great at something. And Darlene and Power headlining their blue line, I think that's the thing you get great at that can drive this team and fuel this team uh, from being the worst team in hockey for 10 years to being back in the playoffs for the first time since I was in high school. So power is a, a big part of that. All right, that's my top 10 Sabre prospect list. Number 10, Isaac Rosine. Number 9, Ryan Johnson. Number 8, Uka Pekalukanen. Number 7, Devin Levi. Number 6, Yuri Kulich. Number 5, Noah Oslin. Number 4, JJ Paterka. At number 3, Matthew Savoy. Number 2, Jack Quinn. And number 1, Owen Power. All right, that is going to do it for us today on this edition of the Locked on Sabres podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen, Locked on NHL. Locked on experts giving you a daily 30-minute podcast on all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked on NHL, your daily 30-minute podcast. Talk to you next time on Locked on Sabres.